Hello there, it's Logan Albright here, and I want to talk to you today about the Henry James novella, Turn of the Screw. There have been a lot of adaptations of the Turn of the Screw coming out lately. I feel like um, I did a review of Ruth Ware's The Turn of the Key on this channel, which I didn't realize at the time was an adaptation of The Turn of the Screw, because I hadn't read it. Uh, and there just came out a movie called The Turning, which is an adaptation, which I just also saw. And I realized if everybody's making movies and other books based on this uh, this story, I should really read it. So I went out and I got a copy of The Beautiful Library of America, Henry James Complete Stories, 1892 to 1898. There are lots of these. Um, Henry James was very prolific. There are five volumes of short stories, and I think there's around five volumes of his novels as well. Lots of stuff out there, but then in the 1892 to 1898 version, they have The Turn of the Screw uh, along with many other different stories. So I got that. It's a novella. It's about 110 pages in this edition, uh, but it's listed among short stories because it doesn't reach the same length that his novel length works are at. The story, very briefly, is about a um, nanny or governess who takes a job uh, looking after these two children out in this big country mansion. Uh, it's just her and the kind of housekeeper woman and then a couple of other servants who don't really ever show themselves or make an appearance. And she goes out and starts taking care of them and everything's fine at first and then she starts to see things she starts to have experiences that she can't explain and she becomes convinced that the house is haunted by the ghosts of two previous servants and then the rest of the story unfolds from there it's a really interesting and really weird story in a number of ways first of all there's a framing device at the beginning uh, about a guy who received the manuscript of this story from uh, a friend of his who is now dead and as, as a first-person narrative, like a diary, that he then shares with other people who are telling ghost stories. That's kind of weird because it doesn't really come up again. It just is used in the very beginning. You don't see it at the end. And it doesn't seem really necessary to the plot. I don't really know why it's there. The other really weird thing about the story is the ending. And I don't want to uh, really do spoilers in this review. So I'm not going to talk too much about the ending. But it's it's very ambiguous. The story is very unclear on what's going on. The ending is really weird. It's very abrupt. Um, and the reader is left to their own devices to come up with what in the world has happened here, what's going on. And I know a lot of people don't like that. We talked in my review on The Colorado Kid by Stephen King. Audiences tend to not like ambiguity. Audiences tend to really reject ambiguity. They want to be told what's going on, what it means, what's happening. Um, I increasingly, as I get older and I consume more content, read more things, watch more things, have become to appreciate ambiguity in fiction. I kind of like it. I'm a big fan of David Lynch uh, and his, his TV shows and movies, and he often leaves a lot of room for interpretation in there. Um, and this also leaves a lot of room for interpretation, and I kind of appreciate that because there's not only one way to look at it. You know, In a traditional narrative, you're told this is what happened, this is what it means, and it's over. Uh, in this sort of thing, you can put a lot more of your own spin on it, and you're not necessarily wrong depending on where you come from. You can have multiple different interpretations, sometimes at the same time, simultaneous interpretations, and they can all be valid and they can all be correct. And I think that's kind of cool. One of the things um, I think is interesting is the adaptations that I've seen, because I did just see the movie and I read the Ruth Ware book, is people seem eager to adapt this story, but they don't want to adapt the whole story. They just grab the premise and then run from there. Uh, the Ruth Ware book goes in a very different direction, it, uh, as does the movie. The movie goes in a pretty different direction. And they just want the premise of the nanny alone out in the house with the kids and something mysterious happening. And then they go off in their own direction from there. Um, I think that's unusual. Usually when you have someone adapt a work, they adapt the entire work. They don't just take the premise from it and uh, build their own story around it from there. It makes me think of the movies from like the um, the 1960s, uh, all the Vincent Price movies where they would take Edgar Allan Poe stories like The Fall of the House of Usher or The Pit and the Pendulum and they'd slap the name of the story on the movie and then they would do a different movie. It would like have a vague resemblance to the story but it was really just to get Edgar Allan Poe's name on there. That's the only reason you had it. Um, but they didn't, the, the story maybe was too abstract or too weird or too vague to make a compelling movie out of. So they would just take the name of it and take an idea from it and then make a different movie out of it. And that's what I feel like is going on here. And I think that's pretty interesting. I was a little annoyed by the Ruth Ware version because I think, like, she doesn't credit Henry James anywhere. She uh, passes it off as her own work. And, you know, it, it's to a large extent it is her own work. But she definitely took the premise and the title, The Turn of the Key, 
from the turn of the screw, and there's nowhere in that book does she mention where that influence came from. And I thought that was a little disingenuous on her part because it took me a long time to realize that that was an adaptation. Um, you know, if you're going to be inspired by something, give them credit. You don't have to give them money or anything. I'm pretty sure this uh, story is in the public domain by now, but uh, it seems a little uh, dishonest to the readers to say, I came up with this all on my own when you're basing it flagrantly on a Henry James story. Reading this and contrasting it with the Ruth Ware version in particular made me realize how much I prefer older writers, uh, particularly 19th century writers. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Henry James' style. I think he's a little bit laborious in the way he goes about it, a little bit circuitous in the way his sentence structure is. It's kind of hard to tell what he's getting at sometimes. Um, but in general, like the sentences are much longer, the ideas are much more complex, a lot more subtle, and that's true throughout all the authors of the 19th century. I, I wonder to what extent uh, the, the reading audiences just seem to have had a longer attention span or are more patience for literature back then. Um, it's not so cut and dried, you know, you had, you had things that took their time to develop and you had uh, more complex prose. And I really like that and I appreciate it. It's more satisfying to me. It's more like meat and potatoes of reading instead of these kind of fluffy, empty calories of these modern thrillers where, you know, I just feel like it's like, oh, there was a ghost and the ghost was scary. The end. Um, this is, goes a lot more deep into psychology. And I think that's that's why I tend to gravitate towards these 19th century novels. I feel like they they respect the reader more and they expect more of the reader to give back into the story something instead of just being told straightforwardly what's happening. As a ghost story, um, I wouldn't call The Turn of the Screw the scariest story I've ever read. It, it does have a certain uh, atmospheric quality to it. It does build up a little bit of tension, but it's not terrifying. Um, I think it's hard for books to be terrifying in the first place because you kind of, you can't do jump scares in a book or anything like that. You, you have to really, uh, you can kind of see what's coming in a book a little more than you can in the movie. So you really have to build up that atmosphere. Um, and there, but there are a few that do it and some of the best horror writers are really able to do it. This one is not terrifying to me, but it does, it does stick with me. You know, it's disturbing. It's disturbing in its ambiguity and that you don't quite know what's going on and that there's something wrong and you can feel that. And so as like a, I wouldn't list it as like one of the great ghost stories of all time, but I would list it as a really uh, interesting psychological thriller and something that will stick with you after you read it. So if you're interested in some of these adaptations that have come out, the Ruth Ware book or the new movie, The Turning, uh, I would recommend delving into the source material, uh, reading the original Turn of the Screw by Henry James. It has a very different ending and a very different way of playing out than both the Ruth Ware version and the movie. Uh, I wanted to compare it, so that's why I read it, and I think I'm glad I did because it's a classic that I really should know more about, especially as an aficionado of horror literature, weird weird fiction, uh, Lovecraft Poe, things like that. You know, it's a classic in, in terms of those. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you really should give it a read. Uh, obviously, you don't have to get the big, fancy, expensive Library of America version like I did. You can get it from like Dover Thrift Editions for $2. It's pretty easy to come across. Definitely worth a read. And I'd be interested to know, I'm not going to tell you my interpretation of the ending. I think I know, uh, I know what I think. But I, I'm not going to tell anybody what I think because I don't want to influence people. I want them to come up with their own uh, interpretations of it. And I'd be interested to know what other people think. If they want to post it in the comments, feel free to do that. Um, and I'll check back with you next time I have a book to review. I've been Logan Albright. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you later.